We're in the midst of Jesus' first sermon. Find your Bible. Find Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's the Sermon on the Mount. It began last week with the Beatitudes. And as you read it, remember that opening line. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. A clear distinction about the crowds and the disciples. You're here as disciples. You have left the crowd. You've left those other affairs of the day and a desire to draw near Jesus, to receive his teaching, and to receive his presence. In its simplest form, your life is not about you. It takes a lifetime to live from that conviction. Like our life will take on greater purpose, greater joy, greater peace, greater promise as we surrender and invite the Lord and the Holy Spirit in to take control and lead us. You are the salt of the earth, right at a very natural level for the body. Salt is essential. Like if you are low in salt, it's, you become imbalanced, a confused, loss of memory. Salt is a preservative. It keeps food fresh in the ancient world. For you to keep life fresh, to be the salt is to stay connected to the source. And to let, and it, and it, and it, and it preservative, it keeps fresh food safe or fresh. So it removes guilt, anger, malice, and it brings seasoning. And then he says, you are the light of the world. You're not the sun. You're not the source of light, but you're connected to the source. And, you're, and they don't light a lamp and put it under a bristle, but it's put on a lampstand. It gives light to all. Why? So that just so, just so, people may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. He does not say people will see your church attendance. It's by our witness that God is glorified. Now, we have a great gift for us here at St. Dennis the next 10 days. It's the story of a young man named Carlos Acutis. He grew up in Italy. He loved to play soccer. He loved to play on the computer. But even more so, he loved Jesus. When he was seven years old, he came to the church to receive his first Holy Communion. His parents were not at all religious. But something happened in the heart of that young man, Carlos. And he fell in love with Jesus and couldn't get enough of the Eucharist, couldn't get enough of Jesus. And each day he was talking to his friends about Jesus. And one of the things that Carl, young Carlos did, he used his great computer skills and his love of the Lord, and he started to research all of the Eucharistic miracles through the centuries. And he put them all together on one particular website. Carlos did that through much of his childhood and early teens. When he, was, he died when he was 15 years old of leukemia. He died in the year 2009. He was beatified in three years ago. So this collection of the Eucharistic miracles is on a website, but now it's become a, a traveling exhibition throughout the world. And the Diocese of Madison purchased a set last fall, and it's coming to St. Dennis next week. It'll be in the gathering space, in the chapel space, in Fellowship Hall, and you get to read these panels and these stories in this interesting piece. And a few pieces with Carlos's life that I want us to see are a couple of his words for us. The next one, please. There he is, this young lad. The only thing we have to ask God for in prayer is the desire to be holy. 
When St. Thomas Aquinas asked that question, what's it take to, was asked that question, what's it take to be a saint? Desire it. Desire, desire to say, my life is not mine. Do with me as you will, Lord. Another one from Carlos. That was his, his, like his personal mission statement, to be always united with Jesus. This is my plan of life. And then the last one, continuously, continuously ask your guardian angel for help. Your guardian angel has to become your best friend, growing in friendship. Like the angels, they're there what? To light, to guard, to rule, and to guide. Develop that relationship. Yes, young Carlos, we're still telling his story. And the one Eucharistic miracle that captured my heart many years ago, actually, I think it was the first one, it was in the year 750 in Lanciano, Italy. There was a priest, a monk, who was at Mass, and he himself had this doubt about the real presence. And as he's consecrating the body and the blood, and he's elevating the host, it changes. It becomes like flesh-like tissue. And the blood, there's droplets of blood. The wine had become blood, that sense of, and droplets of, and it's still preserved to this day, some 1,300 years later, 1,500 years later. In 1971, it was brought to before some scientists, and then three year, or two years later, it was brought to the World Health Organization. Unbeknownst as to what it was, they put it onto the microscope, did the studies on it, and what did they determine? That that tissue, that, that tissue was a human person. Not only part of a human person, but it was of the heart, the heart tissue and the blood. It was type AB. And that's the same type of AB blood connected with the Shroud of Turin, which held the body of the Lord in the tomb. And then that final fun, proteins in the blood sample were in the same proportion as in fresh, normal blood. Friends, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, people at home, know that this exhibit will arrive here this week and that it will be open Wednesday to the following Tuesday. The hours are there. It'll be in the gathering space, in the chapel, in Fellowship Hall. And just come on in and spend time and allow your faith to be drawn deeper into that awakening and drawn towards the gift of the Eucharist and then in the back of your mind, remember that teaching. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them.